In this video, I'm sculpting the face of Wolverine. It's a time-lapse video with lots of hints, tips, and details along the way. Do check the links in the description for all the detailed tutorials on what I'm doing in this video. And if you like what I do, then do check out my website and the playlists on this channel for more great content. First of all, a big thank you to the sponsors of this video, Nvidia and PC Specialist. As you probably know, Blender's performance is greatly accelerated by Nvidia RTX GPUs. PC Specialist are a Nvidia Studio partner, selling a range of customizable PCs that perform superbly well with Blender. Configure your next Nvidia RTX system using PC Specialist's online configurator. So to start with, I brought in my reference images, and if you want to download them yourselves, the link is in the description. The process I'm using is the same as the female sculpt that I did recently, so links in the description for that. And that's a much longer video if you want any more finer detail of what I'm doing here. I just start with a subdivided cube and sculpt that into position. And this is where you'll mainly be using the reference images to get the shape. For the neck, I insert a cylinder and just put that into place. And that's pretty much the basic shape there. So I go back to our face and start remeshing and sculpting out the basic details. Instead of adding a separate object for the nose, I actually just pull out a bit of the mesh. It's sometimes easier to do that, sometimes easier to actually use a different mesh and join it later. It doesn't make too much difference, whatever's easiest for you. In terms of the voxel remesh size, it's pretty low as you can see here, and you keep it nice and low to start with. That makes it much easier to manipulate the mesh into the big shapes. Once you've got the big shapes, then you can start refining it and you go down in the voxel size so you've got more faces to play with. I often get questions about why does your mesh look so smooth? And it's purely to do with the voxel size. So if you want to smooth the mesh, then you change the voxel size when remeshing to a lower count. Now the big difference obviously between a female face and a male face is that sort of very planar structure that you can get with a male face. And of course, with a stylized mesh, we push those structures and highlight and exaggerate them. Once I've got a bit of structure on the face, that's when I add the ears and the eyes. And this time I actually counted out seven eyes for the head. And that should generally work for you. It is different for stylized characters. And I always find it really difficult, the eyes in stylized characters, because the eye size does make a huge difference to how the character looks and feels. Then when I'm roughly happy with the position, I obviously mirror it to the other side, so I only have to change one, and start thinking about the eyelids. I do find it a little bit easier creating a sphere for the eyelids and sort of cutting it out, but you can just kind of blob out your face mesh to overlap the eye. Now before joining those eyelids to the face, I want a much finer detailed mesh or voxel size for my face, so I'll start fleshing out a few more of the details now. That way when I join them together, I'm not struggling with a really detailed mesh to try and sort out the shape of the face. If I join the eyelids quite early with a low voxel size, then I will lose all that detail in the eyelids, that sort of structure, and it's kind of pointless. So it's best to really have the outline of the face with some detail in there before joining. I'm using the crease brush a lot, as you can see, and I kind of use that like it's a pencil on a sketch to sort of dig in the crevices if you find the crease brush isn't working, then you need more of a finer resolution and therefore a lower voxel size. Now you can see with the shape of the head, I'm really exaggerating those features, like I was saying earlier, and the planes of the face. It's a good idea to get maybe an Asaro head as a reference. There's some on Sketchfab that are really nice, and you've got the planes of the face then. I'll put a link to those in the description, but I do find those quite helpful to really cement in my mind where the planes of the face are. And by the planes of the face, I mean the kind of flat bits and the sticky out bits and stuff like that. Now for a male face, we obviously have very sort of rigid and solid aspects to it. So you'll want to be exaggerating those. It is still important to think about proportions. So yes, we're exaggerating things like the chin and making it much bigger because that makes a face look more masculine. But a good understanding of proportions will help you keep that in check and not go too far. So you can see I'm going to quite a low voxel size now. Uh, got lots of detail and lots of faces in the mesh and it looks quite smooth at this point. It does of course help to have a powerful machine to do this. More to do with the processor power and memory at this point whilst we're doing the basic sculpting. When it comes to rendering, then it comes down to your GPU more. You've obviously got the viewport display that's important to have a good GPU for that. But the GPU really shines when it comes to texturing, shading and lighting. 
As I always get asked, here are my PC specs down the bottom corner here. Thanks once again to Nvidia and PC Specialist. Personally, I wouldn't go for any other system except an RTX at the moment in terms of the graphics card. So now I'm moving across to the ear, making sure that's nice and detailed so I can link it to the head with a similar voxel size. When you join your objects together, do try and keep a similar voxel size because then you won't be sort of smoothing out afterwards. It doesn't make a huge difference, but it does help. So before joining, I make sure the eyelids have a nice thickness to them and I apply all the modifiers and then just control J and join them together. And you can see that I forgot to remesh these objects so they had a similar size to my main mesh. So they need a little bit of smoothing out, which is a bigger pain for the neck because you have to go around smoothing the whole thing. It doesn't matter that much, but it's something that I should have done first. Up to this point, I've been showing it at 10 times speed and I'm doubling it now to 20 times. This is now the much finer details, so we start going in, looking at the eyelids and so forth. You'll want to use brushes like the reverse crease, as I call it, so that's the crease brush, but holding down control so it kind of pulls out the mesh in a line, and of course the crease brush on its own to create those dents and crevices and wrinkles and so forth. I do remesh again, making it even finer, and you can see the mesh looking quite smooth now. You can also see the face count on the top left corner, so you can see that I'm at one and a half million here. Now this is one big advantage to using a remesh sort of workflow rather than the Dyne Topo style, because the remesh, once you've done it, it doesn't lag, it's not adding to the geometry. So the Dyne Topo will lag a bit, especially when it gets up to high face counts, whereas a remeshed mesh won't, because you're not adding to it or changing the topology, you're just moving it about. So if you are doing a Dyne Topo style, then you'll want to remesh when you come to the finer detail. An even better approach seems to be the multi-resolution approach where you have a low poly base mesh and you add to it with the multi-resolution, but it can get a bit complicated and maybe a little bit awkward and less sort of freeing. But the really nice thing about that is you can go up and down the levels so you can kind of sculpt the bigger shapes if you want to make any changes by going down the levels and then go back up the levels for finer details and you can get some very high resolution meshes doing that. For me, that approach works better on things like clothing or armor or something along those sort of lines. I did find the expression quite hard. It's not so bad if you haven't got a stylized character, but for some reason the proportions weren't quite working with what I was trying to do with that expression of that sort of scowl. I was using a book, Anatomy of Facial Expression. I'll put a link in the description, but it is quite an expensive book. I rate that book very highly, as well as Anatomy for Sculptors. They're really useful, especially for reference images and to look at whilst you're doing sculpting of certain areas of anatomy. But like I say, they're expensive, but well worth it if you are really serious about your sculpting. Now you can see I've remeshed again, and I'm up to three and a half-ish million faces. Once again, a big thank you to NVIDIA and PC Specialist because it is such a breeze when you've got a powerful machine to do this. The other thing that's probably worth mentioning is that I'm using a display tablet. I do find that's the easiest approach. A normal graphics tablet is absolutely fine and makes a huge difference compared to a mouse, but a display tablet just offers that little bit extra in terms of control and just comfort. So when it comes to the hair, I'm using the same technique as I used in my video about creating stylized hair. Create a sort of blobbed out shape first, which is the sort of base, and then add the curves on top. I'll give that sort of blobbed out shape some structure with again the crease brush, probably my favorite brush it seems, and then just dig it into the mesh and overlap and that's just fine. These simple shapes can work fine just on their own and if you're doing this for game then they're nice and easy to retopologize. but I do feel in combination with the curves this works really nicely and is quite effective. The hair is quite a key feature for the character so obviously I wanted to spend a fair bit of time on that and get it right and I'm still experimenting with different ways of doing it as well so having quite a bit of fun here. You will see me now and again going back to the face and again sorting out the eyes. This is where I was really focusing using that book, The Anatomy of Facial Expression and really trying to get it right and much more of a scale now, uh, less stylized, a little bit more real and I think that worked a bit better than what I had earlier. The next problem I was having was thinking, is this really looking like Wolverine? And of course, there's no particular facial structure for Wolverine. He's different in different comic book versions, films and so forth. But there are some distinguishing features. Obviously, the hair makes it nice and easy, but the face was a little bit harder. I didn't really want it to look like Hugh Jackman. I wanted it to look a little bit more like the comic book versions. 
but I also wanted to give it my own sort of stylized element to kind of push proportions and kind of have fun in that area. Now with the hair, I obviously created just one curve and duplicated it a lot of times and I went into edit mode with lots of the shapes and just pulled them around and varied the position. It's tricky to say whether I went overboard on the amount of curves used here. Perhaps I would have liked a little bit more stylized and less sort of scruffiness, which is kind of going away from my reference image a bit. But you can let me know in the comments whether you think it's working or not. Also, I reduced the size of the base mesh of the hair so that my curved shapes would stick out from it a little bit more because although the base mesh is good for structure, it doesn't look that great compared to the curves. So I wanted them to be more of a highlight and therefore brought the base mesh back in a bit. Obviously, I'm only working on one side at the moment and I just mirror across to the other side later on. I then add some extra curves in the middle to make sure it doesn't look too symmetrical. Obviously, I have to take the mirror off for those. I didn't concentrate much on the back side of the hair. I didn't think I was going to look round the back much. But again, for game characters, you'd tidy that up a bit. And I just went in and edited the base hair mesh to integrate it with the other hair and the skin nicely. So onto texture painting now, I have baked all the cavity maps and things like that. I didn't record that process because it's a bit boring, but if you want to see that, then do check out my texturing stylized faces video link in the description, of course. And for this, I used a lot of blue for the bottom, reds for the middle and yellows for the top. It always seems to work with characters, but an extra amount of blue here, especially around the mouth to give it that sort of five o'clock shadow look. I didn't do much more than this with the text painting, keeping it nice and simple really concentrating on the sculpt and it's a stylized character as well. I added a bit of subsurface scattering and did a bit of a roughness map as well to make some bits shiny like the top of the nose, the cheeks and so forth and the lips of course. For the eyes, lots of people have asked about this so I will do a separate tutorial on that as well, but it's a lot easier than you think. After that, I have lots of fun experimenting with the lighting. Again, look at my video on lighting stylized characters which is generally a detailed look at lighting itself. Finally, I did some eyebrows, which I left to the last minute for some reason. I kept thinking to myself, oh, there's something wrong here. There's something not quite right. And then I suddenly realized it was the eyebrows that I'd left out. And I just do a simple plane with a solidify modifier and there we have it. So there he is, Wolverine. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm thinking about doing a full character next. So let me know who you would like to see. Thanks once again to the sponsors, Nvidia and PC Specialist. And thanks very much to you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.